The Sweet 16 College Basketball Picks Edition of the Sports Game of Podcast is brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer to peer social betting platform that's US based and available in 40 states. Head to cut.com, that's K U T T.com, and use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pick them for a chance to win 100x in NBA, MLB, NHL, college basketball, and more. Sign up today using promo code SGPN to get a 100% deposit match. We're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Beds, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. This is Jerry Glanville, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride, brother. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Oh uh, well, it's time to talk college basketball again. Oh I, yeah, I guess. How was the first overall weekend for you? And now that the dust is settled, I feel like we <laughs> talked about it like shortly after. It was too close. I finally did some accounting. Not my best first week. Mine was uh, kind of got bailed out by some crazy shit. I mean, you know, Oakland uh, money line on Thursday helped me. Friday, I played some uh, some of the money line dogs. I mean, those were really good to me because I had Northwestern, Grand Canyon, Utah State. Those carried me through. And then the the weekend was a real. You know, I hit both my locks on Saturday, lost my dog, and then. On Sunday, I think it was one and one, but then hit my uh, hit my dog on Sunday. So pretty. I mean, I feel like I made an insane amount of bets to come out relatively uh, even for the first four days of uh, the tournament. God help everyone if that. I mean, really, I was on some kind of heater, and if not for that Oregon being this lynch pig game to get wrong, uh, I. Th- the Bitcoin pile on top of <laughs> being larger because it's growing. It also was growing two to di- three dimensional growth in the Bitcoin pile over the weekend, Sean. No, it, well, I, and actually I had Colorado money line on Sunday. That was annoying. Oh, um, that's why you take the points. Yeah. Well, that it would have been a push. Cause we picked it at four. Yeah. But I think a lot of, Not a it, closed, it closed four and a half. I mean, it was just an incredibly you know, Ryan, the square public was just uh, eaten left and right uh, because uh, were they though? Yeah, I mean, didn't haven't you seen all the reports of how bad the sports books did? Uh, Jeff Benson seems like he's doing all right. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> the, he was responding to all the reports about how well the players did, and he was going around saying like, "Oh look, we still have a sports book. Yeah, We're still alive." I, lo- I love that angle. Like, wait, did something happen? Did I miss something last yeah, night? <laughs> but the still the public did very well. They're you know, circus not gonna go belly on. Up. I'm on the player's <laughs> side. Whose side are you on? Ah, Jeff's pretty cool. I, you right. know, I'm starting to become friends with this guy. <laughs> Changing my opinion. All right. Well, you enjoy uh sucking up to uh the, the book over there, Ryan. Uh and speaking of uh books, hopefully you guys are signed up over at cut.com where you can go head to head uh versus uh versus me. Hit at, hit me up at Sean T Green if you don't like any of my plays I will go mono e mono in the cut streets I I think all my Saturday and Sunday action was posted on cut um, so hopefully hopefully you didn't take my uh, locks on yeah. Saturday because you would have went zero and two hopefully you took them Sunday where it went one and one and uh, didn't hit either of the money line dogs because not a lot of the big dogs were barking. Good day for uh, guys like Kramer, the cut mafia who come in and just suck up all these massive favorite positions. Yep. Super fun cut. And again, you can come up with your own bets. Um, you know, instead of arguing with a buddy at the bar or wherever you guys are hanging out watching games, put your money where your mouth is. Tell your buddy, hey, stop running your trap. Download cut. We will bet head to head. There will be virtually no vig uh, because you're playing against each other. Use the promo code SGPN, get the 10% deposit bonus. Head over to KUTT.com or download the cut app today. 
Joining us on the line from the college basketball experience, Colby Nate, aka Pick Dundee. What's happening, Colby? I hate to uh, jump on oh, here no. and uh, you know take the show hostage a little bit here, oh, but okay. I I tried to tell you. Let's just go off the reservation here for a second, and uh, <laughs> right. I tried to, you tell try you. to tell you. Tell us about. Uh, a year to two years ago, I told you that this XFL kickoff is completely oh. bullshit. <laughs> and, and I said, watch out because the NFL is that pussy that they would do it. And they go, you, and you Sean specifically said the NFL would never do this. And now here we are stuck with this complete bullshit. I mean, I am so embarrassed for anyone that Probably. has ever, ever liked football. This is so far from football. I don't understand that the numbers came out in the USFL kickoff injuries are way down. Uh, you had, you had four times the amount of returns in the USFL as you had in the XFL, just one kick return the entire season. Uh, the NFL is Wait, dead. It's the most on, soulless fucking on. what's that? Hold on. What's well, up? no, I, I, I was going to ask you an actual question about the data because I did see that they're touting that with this kickoff, the XFL teams had a increased yards per return compared to, to the, the NFL. NFL because yeah, yeah. no one, so, because uh, but they're factoring uh, in the touchbacks. Of, 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 okay. Now were there any explosive returns at all in or is the, it most in the XFL? Like, or was it a whole bunch of like 10 yard returns because yeah. there was space to run 10 that, yards. And exactly. Then they got exactly. Okay. There was, there was one touchdown, but that was on a trick play where the guy passed well, it to the other side. I, I, I bring it up because I think a lot of people are insinu. Sean and I were talking about this in the office earlier. I think a lot of people are insinuating. This will mean more points uh, or at least help yeah, with, with yard or with field position. And yeah, I guess we'll, we'll see. I'll be curious to uh, see if the average starting I mean, point goes up. Here's my, oh, the, my point is, is, I mean, sports illustrated called this out saying USFL's injuries are way down. And I'm looking at last year's numbers. They had an 88 yard touchdown return by Simmons of Pittsburgh. They had so a 90 yard by Derek Dillon, for, a 92 for yard who, by, who, by Kane. Colby yeah. didn't do a great job of articulating, but what he's trying to say is he loves that the NFL is trying to keep special teams in the game and not just eliminate it. But he hates that they chose the pussy XFL kickoff compared to the much better, much less uh, likely to hurt you and much more likely to create an explosive play USFL kickoff. Did I get that right? They did the most pussy okay. thing possible to me. And, and that is why, and, and we're not even, so we haven't started talking about the, 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 the tackle that they well, outlawed. Uh, Colby, yeah. you should, I mean, I know you're uh your rock star who's uh, too good for the office, but uh Kramer, mm -hmm. Kramer over here was uh he was he See, came she, you're, in you're not going to be able to interpret what I was saying earlier. he came in and he was excited about the hip drop that's not that's role. not that's not he what was I said at he all. was arguing for that's not it. what I said at all you I just don't know said, how you guys I said it's not I, I said it's not that see it's not I said it, it won't be that big of a deal yeah I disagree because these are the rules where you go crazy like the rule of falling on the quarterback with your body weight those are the the 15 yard penalties even if they only call it 10 times a season 15 yards is huge and it ends up deciding these games and that's when you lose your mind I, you I, should not be giving these refs more judgment yes, calls yes I mean the, I the, agree. the pussiness I, I, aside I agree with that. who the fuck knows what a hip drop tackle is and how to correctly officiate these guys tackling are used to tackling with hip drop tackles. The fact that you had offensive NFL players saying this rule is stupid just shows you how how lame it is. Oh, and, and and to me, I don't even know which one's worse because the XFL kickoff to me is like a a a, a soccer play on the football field. It is just it's I, it's unbelievable. This goes against the whole history of the sport and I it, the, the the injuries aren't even that bad of a situation here. Like we're we're so over the top on this bullshit here. I had a guy tell me, well, someone died playing football on Twitter back in 1988, right? And I I reminded Wait, him that we shouldn't hey, have I, done the show today. It's too, I, too I, raw. I, it's I, too I reminded him that I was bartending uh, back in 2010, and a guy ate a piece of shrimp and died right in front of us. He was like 40 years old, right? We're just so, so fucking ridiculous. A guy, a guy was killed by his own metal straw. 
um, that he he was impaled by his own sh- metal straw. That's embarrassing. And I bring that up anytime my wife uh, makes us bring metal straws somewhere. I go, you know, someone died carrying this. Do we get rid of metal straws? Do we yeah. ban metal straws? But do but, I need the Second Amendment to conceal and carry my metal straw? You but, can die a million different but ways. Colby, you realize that they were on the path of just getting rid of the kickoff. And so I mean, well, I, well, uh, that was the NFL's fault too. To me, like uh, the USFL has given you a perfect example uh, to have a returner is exciting for the game. We want to watch the Eric Metcalfs, the Desmond Howards, the, the, the Devin Hester's. We want to watch that. And you're I, p- basically I, taking I, it out of the game right now. I think in their minds, they are keeping it in the game and maybe that will help it evolve. I mean, at least I, I think this is stronger than them getting rid I, of it. I, I would say the hip drop tackle to me is way worse. Uh, rule change because at least the uh, the kickoff return is going to uh, you we're going to see kickoff returns. There were there were no uh, kickoff a, returns last wait, year. You can't have it both ways here because I mean people mean? hate Iowa football. Iowa does a a two yard run in a cloud of dust. That is exactly what the XFL kickoff return is. There's never been there, uh, very few exciting plays has happened there. You the USFL gave you a format to copy. That is apparently uh, safe from the numbers that Sports Illustrated put out. I don't know if that was AI, but I'm saying. I, I would um, argue, yeah, I mean, yeah, who's, was. who's doing uh, the numbers <laughs> at Sports Illustrated? Uh, I thought they got rid of the entire uh, would, team. Well, was last argument, year, but yeah. The argument would have to be that the, either, like, both samples are pretty small, and so who the fuck knows? At least they didn't get rid of the kickoff. Um, what? And, uh, I mean, Come on, man. This is disgusting, dude. But, but this is one of those <laughs> things you were going to be angry no matter what. And. Like, they didn't have to touch anything. They didn't have to no, ruin anything, no, even originally. Well, I, but they I, were always going to. Like yeah. they've been on that path. This for a while. at least you're going to get more tackles, more contact, more physicality. They're bringing back in that into the game. To Special me, teams coaches are happy. If special teams coaches are happy. It feels like they got some sort of. I mean, win. this is like if, if the guy who never got laid complaining that he got a blowjob from a six. <laughs> it's yes, it could be way better, but you still got a blowjob. Dude, job. we weren't going to talk about Noah's. How did Vegas? Stuff. <laughs> how did they? I just don't know how get, the how, how did they fold would, this bad? Would, how did they I fold would, this bad? I you, would you, say I'm with you. Go back to the original rules. Because throwing that aside, they want to make is, it seven this, on seven. This is at least they're tackling, and they're, they're at least there's tackling. There's going to be kickoff returns. Yeah. No, there's no good thing about this. And once again, the NFL in the right in the middle of March Madness, they're like, nope, this we got to <laughs> steal the headlines. <laughs> this is our time. Well, and there's so many. Commissioner Goodell is such a great leader. <laughs> There's so many. Uh, there's Did so- you hear his answer about playing games on Wednesday, <laughs> aka Christmas? He give a fuck. He's like, well, we're not going to play games on Wednesday unless it's Christmas. Yeah, and I actually, Christmas I'm, I'm okay Wednesday. with that one. Like I, that one, I like to me. We want well, more weekday games. But Colby, that's yeah. the ridiculous thing. Is like, if it really is about player safety, we should stop playing the midweek games. Like that's the thing. I, like no, they, we should. What we they should need man, to do we is, should well, or, or returning should, punts. I mean, that's the irony to me. Is like returning punts, you get knocked out all the time when, from not calling a fair catch. When all the owners agree that they like the every field must be grass and there's no more like ridiculous, like four day weeks, then yeah, maybe, maybe we can believe their, uh, their charade, but until then it's just rich people doing rich people things. Colby, we got a lot to get to. Uh, not only do we got a uh, sweet 16 picks for a uh, entire Thursday slate. Uh, we got this week's edition of real men of DGENs. Of course, real men of DGENs presented by game time, head over to game time.co. MLB opening day right around the corner. Make sure you subscribe to the MLB Gambling Podcast and make sure you get your tickets over on Game Time. Or maybe your team made it to the Sweet 16. You're not. You can't buy tickets ahead of time. You didn't know that your team, NC State, aka the Power Posse, uh, were going to get their ticket punch to the Sweet 16. But now uh, you can get the tickets. You can get them last minute. You can get great seats at a great price. Just go to GameTime.co. Use the promo code SGPN for twenty dollars off, or download the Game Time app, your go-to app for last-minute tickets. Again, get the Game Time guarantee. If you can find a better price in a better seat at a better section, or sorry, same row, same section for a better price, they will refund you one hundred ten percent. They've never had to do that. I talked to the game time execs. They said, "Yeah, we throw it in there because we try and challenge the people to find better prices. Don't waste your time. Just go to gametime.co and use the promo code SGPN." There are so many uh, candidates uh, that we could have used for real men of DGENs. 
Um, of course, Shohei. Uh, well, we'll just get to it. But this one in particular is very fun. SGPN presents Real Men of DGENs. Real Men of DGENs. We salute you. Listener Austin. That's right. Hi, Sean. Heard the baseball season preview today. That four and a half a million Otani transfer was totally a tip to his interpreter for making good bets for Otani. I know from experience, I was in Bali with a buddy of mine and we hired a driver named Putu to take us around the area, which included taking us to live cock fighting. Uh, Putu <laughs> would translate the odds for each chicken and then make the bets for us with our money. When we hit on any of the fights, we totally tipped Putu. We even bought a chicken that was a long shot, and our chicken, we named him Rocky, fucked up the larger chicken. Claw right to the throat. Huge tip for Putu. We salute you, Austin. Oh man. It is it's uh I mean we got we got uh you know real men of DGENs for days. You still don't think he's getting in trouble, Sean? <laughs> Who? Otani? Uh, no, actually, well, I think this is going to be pretty bad. I I think he was I I watched his press co- conference. He was pretty compelling. And then uh I was texting with uh Did you see all the ones with the voiceovers and the various Oh, like, yeah, they're great. Very good. Uh the te- I was texting with the co-host of the Dire Eagles podcast, Justin, massive Dodgers fan, full oh. spins them. Oh. And he was he brought up a good point. He goes, Hey, if the bank flagged anything, or if the accountants or any of those people flagged anything, they would actually talk to the interpreter. Like I did, didn't do the math in my head that if this guy is truly interpreting all of your things, all of your documents has access that's to all good. your financials. That's a crazy amount of power. He also pointed out the guy uh, was making 400 K a year. I think if you're a Dodgers fan or a Otani defender, what you're talking yourself into is, Hey, this guy was bent through this bookie. And he said like, Hey, I'm Otani's interpreter. If I lose, don't worry. Otani's got me uh, with that sort of idea where he's like oh, four and a half million leash. I think, <clears throat> no, I, I, I think he convinced the bookie that uh, he was placing bets for Otani. Now, whether he was, or he wasn't, at least there's enough cloudiness around that the MLB can bury it and move on. Cause they don't want, they don't want any, they just want Otani to uh, hit dingers and uh, sell baseball yeah, I, to the Japanese. I just it's, it's still uh, it, the, the idea that he, even with that type of persuasion, he would be able to get a leash of four and a half million and be able to run it all the way out to where four and a half million would need to be p- and well, then, I mean that's the other thing. Like for at that some point, to get to t- to take an obvious risky maneuver, which is a wire transfer, that tells me that money was maybe sought as not being collectible, and he was going to take any penny he could. And so, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I, lot, I don't want to pretend like I know how these a, worlds a lot work. Of, but. A lot of smoke, um, but I think there's enough that, especially if the interpreter is going to take the fall. I think baseball is just going to move on, and I don't think we'll ever really get to find out. I just can't wait for the movie, The Interpreter. <laughs> well, I also want that job. I mean, if Otani is hiring, I'll fucking learn <laughs> Japanese. Oh, uh, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're you're help you're helping your buddy out with four and a half million. Now, maybe he claims. I mean, he seemed legitimately pissed. If he's if he's acting, he did a uh, he did a good job uh, with the press conference. So I, I don't know. I, I think it was producer Josh pointing out that there were like photographs of them hanging out hours before this like harsh accusation of theft occurred. There's a lot of uh, conflicting timelines. Sean, we've watched a lot of forensic files. So I feel <laughs> like I feel like we're gonna come out on this one with uh, some sort of do life, we, life forget, insurance policy on the interpreter. We, uh, I think we talked about it on one of the March Madness shows, but worth reiterating. We watched the one uh, the one, the one forensic files where the guy burned down his own house. <laughs> the most unbelievable and one. one of the, and it was crazy. He was a cop. There was like this dirty cop thing. There was it was bonkers. Oh. And uh, one of the tells that they could, that they knew it was an inside job. The uh, arson on the house. He had conveniently moved all his bowling, his prized bowling trophies, to the backyard shed, and that did not burn down. Uh, so they immediately uh, it was a red flag. They also found out he planned on using the insurance money to, <laughs> to pay 
pay his way into the bowling so the pro bowling association. So uh, I just love that someone loves bowling that much. It's very like, big Lebowski. Going to burn down his own house. Yeah, it does seem like a a, a Mark that frame at eight. <laughs> uh, chat is lit. What's up, chat? Appreciate you guys mm. tuning in. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. All right, uh, we got games in Los Angeles at the formerly. It's no like uh, Colby tried to ask if anyone had a hookup at the Staples Center. Colby, oh, I thought he was. I thought he was seeing if we knew any Wisconsin Badgers. In, in, in true Colby fashion, he's not caught up with the times. It's not calling it Crypto.com. It's not the Crypto.com arena. In yeah, beautiful. I mean, sun, <laughs> sunny Los I stopped, Angeles. I stopped going there when they stopped the Pac-12 tournament. <laughs> Uh, at least crypto.com had money to pay for their sponsorship and they didn't need to get torn off like some other arenas. Uh, all right, we got a 6 2 matchup in the West region Arizona, Clemson. Arizona laying seven and a half, minus 310 on the money line. Clemson plus 250. 151 and a half is the total. You know, I, I think even coming into the tournament breakdown and the bracket and the first round. Uh, everything was about Arizona getting to this uh, little uh, regional where they would get to play in Los Angeles as a stepping stone to play in Arizona. And uh, uh, if you if you've ever gone to a, a sporting event, whether it be USC or UCLA in Los Angeles, when they're playing Arizona, uh, there are a shitload of Arizona fans here already. I certainly think this is going to be a home atmosphere for the Arizona Wildcats, and I and I would even push this out into the universe. Is there a better team that no one's really talking about right now in the tournament? Last thing I'll say, that white boy on Clemson, he's about to go up against a different situation out west here. Uh, Arizona lay all the points, all the all the money lines, whatever you want to do with it. This is weird because I I feel like I keep fading or I I've been fading Clemson a lot and and they've been shoving it down my throat. Now this is always Sweet 16 is always an interesting time to pick games because every team more or less is coming in fairly hot. Obviously you have to <laughs> win a couple of games to get in here, but uh I I really regret fading uh Syracuse legend Joe Girard. Um he's played really <laughs> well in this tournament. To me, the uh the stat, the trend, the angle that I think is going to make a difference in this game is Clemson's defense in the tournament has been particularly good when it comes to de defending the three-point shot. You look at New Mexico, one of the reasons New Mexico was a complete disaster. One, they looked just not prepared, horribly coached. Uh looks like Patino's son is is a front runner now for the Louisville job. Oh. That would be uh just yes, pure please. pure gold. <laughs> Uh, but New Mexico three of twenty three from three point range. They held Baylor six of twenty four. If they can continue to play good closeout three point defense against Arizona, I think they're going to make this a game. And Clemson has been extremely reliable from the free throw line in the tournament. Uh, twenty to twenty four against Baylor, fourteen and nine against New Mexico. They're seventy nine percent from the line these first couple games. So you throw in some good three point defense. Uh, nobody believes in us type uh, mantra that they keep running and they're hitting their free throws. I think this game is going to be a little closer and you saw Arizona have a little bit of trouble closing it out. Um, now certainly they did get the close out there towards the end, but it was right on that number. I kind of have a feeling this game is going to shake out the same way where you're never really going to feel like Clemson's going to win the game, but Arizona has trouble completely. Uh, outpacing them, so I I like Clemson and the points. Colby, what are you what are you doing here? Yeah, I'm with you. I like Clemson and the points too. I think Arizona's first two opponents really shouldn't have been in the NCAA tournament. Long Beach State was a four seed in the Big West. Uh, no, they, bags. they ran the table for their coach, but they weren't great wow. all year. Uh, Dayton had no business being in the NCAA tournament. They just played Steve Alford. Broads. They're offensively challenged, and uh, Clemson is a veteran team. If anything, I like. I think you can draw comparisons with this Clemson roster to what Washington State and Stanford had, who beat Arizona this year. So I'll take the points. Uh, I th there is going to be a large home edge for for Arizona, so maybe they get the win. Uh, but I think it's going to be I think it's going to be a close game. I think you know Clemson's super experienced, and I think that could be a deciding factor there. Uh, and I also think the way that they play so slow, which is similar to uh, some of the other some of the other opponents that have, have beaten Arizona. Can throw them out of their, you know, their 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 rhythm. So uh, give me the points and the Tigers all day. 
Yeah, I think you're. I think you're making a good uh, case about the the pace because, like, how did you know? I mean, Long Beach State they were kind of hanging around there early, and then they just the pace got completely away from them. And we all watched it like late in the game. Arizona took the foot off the gas. We were there in the sports book for that electric moment when Long Beach State backdoored the twenty and a half. Um, and it's interesting because both, I think, Arizona tournament games. I'm I'm double checking the. Uh, the score, but I feel like both covered. Um, yeah, so Dayton was they were favored by nine and a half. They won by ten, so they covered by a half. And then Long Beach State they were favored by twenty and a half and won by twenty. So both Arizona games were a half point off the spread. That's kind of crazy. I I wouldn't be like six seven point win feels right online here for this uh, Clemson Tiger program. Feels like it could get stretched out. I mean, you're basically saying, like, if the guard, if the guards can play like they did against New Mexico and create the same problems, then they're they're going to be in this game. But if if Arizona's just better, I mean, that that's that's they're, the thing. When these when they come off the bus, it's gonna you're it's gonna be one of those games. I there's mean, two teams that to me have really played nobody th- thus far, and that's Alabama and that's Arizona. Um. It's going to be interesting to see how they do against much better competition. A big step up this this round. Hmm. I'll I'll lay the points happily. I uh, this is one of my favorite. This is a lock right here. Really? Um, yeah. I I think you guys are crazy. I mean, this this Clemson team. You n- neither of you mentioned the variants that they've they've played with, and this this time off certainly would have loved to see them keep going. But you always got to pause with the time off and wonder what they're going to be. Who Clemson? Yeah. I mean, they've put, they've had very bad moments this year and they've had bad moments against teams that run this year. I mean, so, I mean, we can talk about Oregon state and Stanford beating Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> Those are horrible teams. All right. No, I mean, they're, it's yeah. not like they're, a, I mean, they were 23 in Ken Palm's ranking. Like it's not like they're a complete uh, Cinderella. Uh, you know, 24th in offense, uh, 20, 38th in defense. Like they fit that, uh, what is it? Top 40 in both sides. Uh, I mean, Arizona obviously is the better team deserves to be favored. I, it's I, a strength on strength game. I think almost, the- almost a full eight percentage points, um, 7.2. So closer to seven, there, better at the line. I think that's going to matter when this spread sitting at seven and a half. Yeah. I think guarding the three point ball is everything. And the Clemson yeah. does that pretty well. And if you look at back at some of the losses that Arizona's had, it's when teams uh, have defended the three well, but I am, yeah, ex- I, mean, I am concerned about that home crowd though. Cause I really I, do believe that's going to be like a 90 to 10 uh, Arizona crowd. A, the, the size that Arizona plays with too, is going to, I think is going to give P a hall's going to have problems with that. I, I do think that's, that's a very very, but I he's very also sp- due for a good offensive game. He had two shitty offensive games this thus far. I just don't like the, both teams. The the winning team will have more success on the inside, and that that's it. Seems like Arizona is going to have an advantage there. All right, I'll stand on the island, um, and I guess I'll I'll uh, say I told you so after the fact. <laughs> San Diego State heads to a virtual home, another virtual home game here in Boston, Mass. It's a baby fucking wheel, for UConn. man. Um, this one tips at 439 on the West Coast. One five matchup in the East. Yukon laying eleven, minus six twenty five on the money line. San Diego State plus four fifty five. One thirty five and a half is the total. If you don't think this is gonna be a home game for Yukon, you don't know ball. Uh Yukon fans are really annoying. They're everywhere in the Northeast. Uh they will certainly be there supporting their squad. Uh, but I, you know, how do I not take the points with our gals? Our gals indeed. Yeah, I mean, shout out to Hurley who is really good at generating the nobody believes in us angle, even though they were the they were a number one seed. Oh, they the committee gave us the hardest bracket, even though we're the number one seed overall. Kinda they true. didn't want us to succeed. Yeah, no, I'm just saying. Uh, I'm he, great coach. He's kind of playing it up like everyone's against us, us against the world. I mean, they are annoying. Uh, And I do hope San Diego state wins outright. Uh, They beat San Diego state, obviously rematch from the tourney last year. They beat him by 17. San Diego state has had this game circle, but on the other side, UConn had won every tournament game last year by 13. This year they won by 39 and 17. I mean, I'm going to take San Diego state in the points because I believe in their defense, but I would say this. 
it's going to come down to their three point shots. If they're not hitting their three ball early, I think you live bet the shit out of UConn because <laughs> uh, if they can't hit some threes to keep them in this game, I'm I'm worried about their offense. And Ladie, they had shooting some threes, spacing the floor in a in a fun way. Like he said, he wants to be a scorer. Um, and if he's having a game like he had against Yale, where not only was he getting points in the paint, making them work in the paint, wearing them down, but then also you know, like bringing the ball up and just hitting spot up threes. I don't know if he's going to be able to do that against UConn's defense, but you know, San Diego state shot 13 to 27 against Yale from behind the arc. They need something like that to keep them in this game. Different class of athlete. No, cool. certainly. I Kobe. mean, uh, you know, yeah, I'll take the points. I think Lede is a much better player than he was a year ago. He's really worked yeah. on his game. Uh, and so I think he can have some success in the post. And then I think the big one is Reese waters, the USC transfer that can score that that's one that I think maybe just stay within that. I don't th- expect them to win the game in Boston, but I just think that's a little large. The way San Diego state plays defense is still legit. And you know, a lot of people talk shit about that national championship game. That was still like a four or five point game at the five minute mark. So, I mean, yes, the final, the final score says, you know, 16 or whatever that number was. Um, but that San Diego State had them in a close spot, and they have the edge here as far as motivation to me. Getting they have mostly the same team intact. You know, uh, they lost what Kashad Johnson to Arizona, and Matt Bradley to graduation. But and and I think one other player that I'm drawing a blank on the big man. Um, but uh, they didn't have Reese Waters last year, and I think Reese Waters can 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 shoot the ball well. Uh, so I say they stay within that number, but I think UConn still winning this game. Yeah, and, and doesn't it feel? I, I know it's a stupid uh, point, but doesn't it feel like some of these dogs are a little due considering oh. how considered? I mean, we saw it. Is, is that why you picked Clemson? No, no, okay. Clemson. I, okay. I legit think the three point defense is going to be the difference. But I mean, when in doubt, aren't you going to lean a little doggy considering how chalky uh, last round was? Like, it, it feels like it's bound to balance out so here a little bit. The, in the first game we talked about Clemson, 60% of the bets um, in this one. So dog was getting more of the action in this one, UConn getting 81% of the handle, 71, oh 74% of the bets. So it, this is, this would be like this in, in North Carolina or the public sides of, of Thursday. Uh, so maybe that's how you fade it. You take a you good old fashioned San Diego state hour gals. I, I will say, I, I, I do wonder uh, how much Yukon uh, wants to get in the fight that they're about to get into. Uh, I, I almost like that's the best version. If, if they really, if they fall victim to falling and get playing into San Diego state's game and they hit a couple threes, I think we're, we're good. Otherwise uh, Colby's concern is real. If Yukon uh, Yukon could destroy the San Diego state team. Well, no, I actually feel like, I actually feel like if this was in Chicago, maybe, maybe I would try to put the money line play, but with it in Boston, with that crowd behind them, I just don't see a way where San Diego state wins this game, but I, but I think they could stay within the number. I think they could stay with, I think, you know, last the national championship game got blown out of proportion late. I did see a thing uh, on the old Reddit Reddit sphere that uh, Iowa State is it apparently has shown up with tremendous numbers, hmm. and uh, there a no a, a a large chunk of the stadium has been sold to people from Iowa, and so who knows maybe that, another that, that team would be comes fantastic in, yeah. comes in as the X factor, and I I can't imagine they'd be rooting for UConn. So San Diego State, some inherited fans uh, from the great state of Iowa. Oh, that would be awesome. All right. Hey Ryan, uh, just shout out to unified healing. Whether you're a world-class athlete like myself or a world-class mm-hmm. podcaster like myself, we all understand the importance of mental and physical well-being and proper recovery for top notch performance. Uh, again, I think of all these teams quick turnaround here uh, from the round of 32 to the sweet 16. You got to get your recovery in Yukon's probably exhausted from uh, kicking, kicking so much ass. Uh, I, they, I feel like Hurley still left a lot of those guys in running up the score, showing the committee what's what uh, unified healing is a new and super innovative global network of wellness centers powered by energy enhancement system or EE system. If you haven't heard of EE system yet, you'll want to listen up. The technology promotes wellness 
deep relaxation, purification, and rejuvenation. Whether you're here in LA or hundreds of other uh, locations across the globe, access to a center is easy and affordable. You're going to feel a lot better and uh, expedite your recovery. Interested in experiencing the EE system technology for yourself? Go to unifiedhealing.com slash SGPN to learn more and find a center near you. That's U N I F Y D healing.com slash SGPN. No material testimonials on the unified healing website are intended to be viewed as medical advice or substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment. And before undertaking a new healthcare regimen, including the EE system, uh, time for our underdog uh, fantasy pick 'em entry. I feel like we haven't been able to do these uh, recently because we were out in Las Vegas. Oh, we were we were in the uh, state I was of sin. I was Jonesing. Sin <laughs> City. Unfortunately, uh, underdog not there, but available in a ton of states. Promo code SGPN. Get the hundred percent deposit match. Colby, uh, and feel free to toss in some uh, NIT games. Oh, I'm I'm all about it. We just uh, oh, had it, had Indiana State and uh, Milk Chamberlain uh, just beat Cincinnati uh, once again. Kareem Abdul Jabbar getting it done. <laughs> Is Milk Chamberlain or Milk Chamberlain? Milk I, I Chamberlain. There's also Skill Russell. They're calling them. There's a bunch of names Seth that have taken Larry, over. I do like that one. Yeah. Uh, Larry Blurred. So yeah. Awesome. yeah. I do. Um, I will. I will make a case for my buddy uh, Joseph Gerard the Third. If we want, we want to toss a good Italian in there. I know do, Ryan can't turn him. Do you like Larry Nerd or Larry Blurred better? <laughs> blurred is better. Blurred. Is, <laughs> Steph, is, Steph Blurry is pretty good. Uh, that one yeah. probably my favorite. Uh, Colby, what do you like in the underdog fantasy pick them? And yeah, feel free to toss in some uh, NIT action. I mean, the, I'm the, sure we got some DJs sweating that out as well. More so. shelf life on the actual tournament games, but whatever Colby wants to do. Well, I, I, I think there's value here. I mean, look, UNLV, unfortunately for them, they are going back to Jersey. This means two times in 10 days. They just played at Princeton. They come back to Vegas. They, now they got to go back to Jersey. Seton Hall is the team that feels disrespected on not being in, just like Indiana yeah. State and uh, and Milk Chamberlain. They're going to prove a point, and I think I think UNLV has finally met their match. They're going to get destroyed here. It's different than playing Princeton. Seton Hall has the athletes. I I think Kadari Richmond is a good play at higher than fifteen and a half points. He's been their best player all year, um, and I think just in general, just that they. UNLV doesn't want it. They're gonna. They're like, we gotta go back to Jersey. We're gonna go back. Um, I like that. And then I'll jump over to the the game going on in uh, Salt Lake City, which is uh, Utah and VCU. VCU has no idea what they're signing up for going into. You know, Utah fans will show up. It doesn't matter if it's a game of badminton. You know what Colby, I mean? And then Colby, Colby, yeah. remember one higher, one lower. That's our formula. Mm. You're not doing too. You're not trying to okay. squeeze two hires in. All right. Well, let's let's go to the oh, VCU got, side of it. Let's go to we, here. Here we go. Here we well, go. We, 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 we had such a great run with the one higher, one lower. Am I wrong, Ryan? Am I wrong? I just uh, I was uh, I was watching the damsel in distress on the tracks, about to get run over by the freight train. Eb Jackson, the former uh, Michigan Wolverine. Let's take lower than twelve and a half. He's going to be now we're talking. He's going to be alarmed at the the fans turning out alarmed. to the Super Soaker or to you know <laughs> and or not the Super Soaker but Salt Lake City's the Super Soaker 2.0 and uh and they will struggle to score against Utah in that in that building. So, let's take the lower there. Love it. Uh and and I love the fact that we're fading a guy named Zeb. Um Zeb Jackson lower 12 and a half points. Kadari Richmond higher 15 and a half points. Uh, get that over at underdogfantasy.com promo code S G P N get the hundred percent deposit match. Kramer, what do we got? Uh, are, you're not worried at all about Shaheen Holloway. Maybe doing some job interviews on the side here, doing some zooms, maybe calling into Louisville say, Hey, you know, uh, Papa John, I got no beef. Alabama, North Carolina. This is the second game in the building uh, in Los Angeles. If Colby's a able to find his way into the building, West Region one four matchup, six fifty start time, but we know that will be delayed. Um, I'm forgetting who it was, but someone reached out with a system about uh, games that are delayed and taking the under. Oh. I, I did. Uh, uh, people are really just 
really trying to look, look at the next uh, wave of pioneering great, great systems. Alabama, UNC, UNC laying four here, minus 185. Bama plus 155. 173 and a half is the total. Uh, I'm going to let Colby go first here because th- this is an interesting matchup. I, I don't necessarily know who's aided by the location. And uh, I would I imagine do. any Clemson fans would not be rooting for North Carolina. Um, probably Arizona fans not rooting for North Carolina either. But I don't know if there's some weird uh, bad blood between them and Bama. Uh, so yeah, fire away here because I, I will say the spreads. A, it does seem a couple points short of what I thought it might be. But I also have kind of talked myself in a circle in terms of who I like in this game. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm locking up North Carolina. Let's um, go. Okay. I I, I can't trust I, this. All there's a reason why this offense has never succeeded in March. Um, and I just touched on why I, I, I Arizona I thought has been gifted some nice opponents. Well, I think even more so has been Alabama. Um, North Carolina is a veteran team. Like they, they, this is a team that's legit. They have no one the oh. matchup with Armando Baycott. In my opinion, like who the fuck is going to be guarding him? Yeah. North Carolina's defense is so much better. Charts, uh, oh. what? Charts top fifty, I think thirty ninth in the nation. Meanwhile, Alabama's two hundred and eighty fourth. They're going to be able to get whatever shots they want. And I, I really love uh, the other angle here is North Carolina. They're not like a super slow team, but they can play slower. They're like I, I understand they're like top one hundred in pace, but. That they've proven a lot of these guys that were on teams before that were much slower pace wise. So I think that's going to be part of their handicap is make Alabama feel uncomfortable uh, and, and slow down the game a little bit for them and then maximize these possessions with their great guards, which I think North Carolina actually has the better guards. And I actually, uh, just the fact that there's no one to, to match up with Baycott. I'm on the Tar Heels all day. I don't believe Nate Oates. There's a reason why. Look back last year, they lose to San Diego State. They were favored in that game. The year before, what, Notre Dame got them. The year before that, UCLA, and UCLA was a play-in team. Um, there's a reason why they have these struggles. This this style of ball does not bid well for, for March, and they've been gifted two shitty opponents. Well, and especially, especially on the long rest. Like, if this was a quick turnaround game, and maybe they, maybe they were facing a, a gassed, UNC team and them running around all over the court. Maybe they get to him, but to your point, Colby, I mean, you look at the Ken Palm efficiency, Alabama defensive efficiency, a hundred first uh, UNC defensive efficiency, fourth in the nation. That's a tremendous difference. Alabama led up 96 to fucking Charleston. Uh, I mean, what can this UNC offense do? I mean, you know, Alabama kind of fortunate that grand Canyon shit the bed from the line. They were 23 of 37. Uh, you know, Alabama was in control of that game. Hats off to them. But I think, you know, by all accounts, UNC, it was they were going up against Izzo, who again, good coach, was outmatched in this matchup here. Didn't didn't do a good job coaching. No adjustments in the second half. But on UNC's part, when it was like 2020, the coach ripped into him like, "Do you guys want this fucking game?" They put the pedal to the metal. They really. Finished the end of that first half very well, and then just fucking boat raced them in the second half. I I like taking teams like this UNC team, one a team that had a little bit of a wake up call, faced some adversity, that has a good defense, that has a a offensive player that is a matchup nightmare uh, for the other side. I mean, they just check so many boxes. I love UNC here. I would play this up to like six and a half, seven, because I. You know, Alabama's offense obviously is always scary, but man, you look at the two defenses, it's just night and day. And I don't know if Alabama's offense is that much better than UNC. Like I I four points feels really like a good price here. And I and I and to Kramer's point of talking about like Arizona fans rooting for I actually think Arizona matches up better against Carolina than they do Alabama in a way. Alabama gets up and so I don't know that they'll be hip enough to to do that, but another thing is Carolina is also like the Dallas Cowboys. I feel like they have a shit ton of average college basketball fans that say, "Hey, I love North Carolina. Michael Jordan went there." So oh, I, yeah. Whoa, whoa. They're they're kind of like that, man. I mean, that, that I would put them in the same bin as like the Notre Dame football, where you're just I mean, getting you're getting the lay fan that loves them. It's interesting. Ken Palm has this at two. Yeah. Um. 
I, I think, you know, to the, the, the answer, I think the conventional answer to the, who's going to stop Baycott is Baycott plays below the rim. Bama has some bigger guys that maybe are, are going to, I agree with you though. Like, I feel like this is the classic, even though Alabama has some vets out there, the UNC vets will just be smarter in this game. And I do think they're going to have the crowd. I think North Carolina has a tremendous amount of money. They're obviously tied in with the Illuminati. Um, <laughs> Mike I'm Brown sure and, his na- and his nanner pudding will be there. I mean, I've I ca- just you know I don't know how much you put into it, but I've met way more people from you know UNC fans out here in LA than Alabama fans. Alabama fans out in LA are is pretty rare. I feel like. Oh yeah, I mean, do we have to call it out? What? Oh, it's a uh, slightly different class of uh, exit strategy from the university, if you know what hmm. I mean. I think I U- don't know what you mean. I think though. a UNC degree it carries a little bit more weight than a oh, degree wow. from Alabama. Wow, which which might allow you to you know be a little a little bit more mobile and where you're able to <laughs> to go get that job. Well, I think if you love Alabama sports, you a mean? lot of them just don't leave Alabama. Where UNC, <laughs> I feel like, oh yeah, you know, uh, hey, my buddy's uh, a podcast my... producer. I know my uncle's a studio head. Uh, he plays golf <laughs> with some. Guys who own some Myrtle Beach condos, like uh, very much more of an LA vibe. Uh, I, I don't know. They both do love wearing polos and boat shoes. <laughs> they that, do. That is something they have in common. <laughs> and maybe they can get together and wear the same outfits to the game. Uh, I, you know, after listening to the arguments, uh, both you being on the same side didn't really help. My only, my only que- like return question is: Well, in both of these. Like to your, so, you're basically saying you think UNC is gonna know that if they slow it down, that's gonna mess with Alabama because so far Alabama's only played teams that also want to run, but Alabama runs better than them. What and what does so, Alabama have that's better than than North Carolina, in my opinion? I think yeah, but I, guard. I see, no, I I would argue that Davis I mean, that, is better than no, any I'm, of them. Yeah, I'm saying that would be the argument if you like, if you're more. I mean, it's preference. If you like Sears over Davis, then you like Alabama. I just think like the t- the Tar Heels are such a veteran team, you know. When they went out and got yeah, Ingram no, in the portal I, and and Ryan, um, Sean, I predicted that I, uh, that North Carolina and Arizona would face off and we would have the Caleb Love revenge spot. This was weeks ago at this point. Lay the points, I guess. I really, yeah, I, I, I think I guess. I feel like this could be close, but. I'll lay it with North Carolina. I think Colby's right. I think that they'll, if they're smart enough to realize that they they do should feed the post and slow it down and never really ha- don't give up transition stuff because you're always down low. You know your guards are always in good spots. Lay the four points. I'll I'll uh I will say Ken Palm a couple points off the number on all these uh, this week, which is pretty interesting. interesting. Do you side with Ken Palm there or do you side with the market right? Uh, well, the market would say Alabama, like Ken Palm would say Alabama. The market would say North Carolina. I would say North Carolina. I think there's probably, sp- I definitely with Arizona, probably with North Carolina, there's probably some like home court juice being hmm. popped in there on, you know, Mich- again, I, I think that Michigan state game was like the perfect game for this uh, UNC team to play because it was a, kind of a wake up call that Michigan state was hanging with them early. And then, you know, they got the, they got the foot up the ass and all downhill from there. We're like Alabama. I don't know. I don't know if they've been kind of tested and I feel like they need to be tested the Colby's point. Like there's a reason these one dimensional teams hit the wall. I mean, Ryan, when we did our uh, teams to ride teams, to fade list wasn't, a, I'm, I'm sure Alabama, oh, Alabama was, was on, on the fade list. This yeah. is that, you know, that's a great tiebreaker. They, because of that defense, because yeah. they don't play, they, they play great offense. They don't play a uh, great defense all the time. And sometimes yeah, North Carolina six in adjusted uh, efficiency defense, 17th adjusted uh, efficiency in offense. So they, they still qualify as, you know, potential uh, contenders here where Alabama's one one defense for offense. So even their offense, even if you were just going off the adjusted efficiency stuff, it's just a slight bit better. Oh, so interesting. North Carolina entered the conversation since the tournament started. That's oh, were they not? They uh, were not. They were on the out. They were on one of the fringe categories when we started. So, uh, very interesting. All right. So, uh, Discord, a solid card for the Sweet 16. I already got two picks on Connecticut and Alabama. Uh, what a what a group. All right. Last one. Two three matchup in the East. We're back in Boston, Massachusetts. 7:20 p.m. Uh, that's a late, late tip on the East Coast. 
Uh, maybe we're worried about these. Mid- we're gonna get some texts from Cousin Mush. Well, the, these Midwestern body clocks are used to farming <laughs> it all in the sun. That's uh, that's awfully late to be up ten twenty local time. Illinois, Iowa State, Iowa State laying one and a half minus one twenty on the money line. Illinois plus one hundred one forty six is the total. Uh, part of the chalk here, a two three matchup. Uh, offense versus defense, Colby. Which side are we going with? Yeah, I trust defense in March. Uh, I mean, this is to me the most interesting game of all four, just because the contrast in styles. Now, like you said, I know Iowa State's fans; they're always awesome. And if this is an Iowa State crowd, maybe that's part of the handicap we should add in there. But I just think they're better. I think you look at what the Illini, Illini have had. You know, they okay, nice run in the, in the Big Ten. But Big Ten's a bunch of staples. You look at like some of the other teams they play that play great defense, like Tennessee and Marquette. Back in the non-con, they got them. You know, Marquette won by seven. I think that was at Illinois, and uh, Tennessee beat them by I think I think right around the same same amount. But um, I think Iowa State is better offensively than they've been in a long time. I know Otzelberger went to the Sweet Sixteen a couple of years ago, but they didn't have a shot creator. They didn't have a you know to me Gilbert and 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 Lipsy and and some of those other guards. They can create their own shots better than they used to, and we know the defense can force a ton of problems. And really, like, I trust Otzenberger with in game adjustments better than I do Underwood as well. Hmm. So that's all the difference for me. I do, exp- I'm, I'm fascinated by the matchup because this is like, this is like seeing like uh, Kirk Ferentz against Mike Leach, you know? So uh, it, it, it'll be fun to, to watch the matchup. But I, I think Iowa State wins. And I think even though it's a small spread, I wouldn't be surprised if they won by a lot. Uh, I'm on Illinois one because this listener just keeps uh hitting oh, me up with a ton of shit saying like, Oh, every time you fade Illinois, <laughs> we win. So I'm all in on Illinois just for that. You're welcome, sir. Oh, wow. I, I don't even have his uh, name in front of me. I'll dig it up, but shout, shout out to you fighting Illini fan. And I learned that uh, Underwood has, has been um, kind of getting some coaching tips from the legendary Jay Wright. Uh, right, kind of suggesting doing some more booty ball for Illinois, and this uh, this Illinois offense. I understand the case of like, hey, in big crunch time, Iowa State, you like them better because of the defense. I get that case. I mean, either way, this is going to be a great game. But Illinois has been hot since February thirteenth. Their only losses was that one point loss against Penn State, which was like a crazy, fluky game. If you if you watched it, I mean, I was on Penn State. That was a that was a wild ride. I mean. Uh, I don't know if Penn State necessarily outplayed them, and then they lost to Purdue, who seemingly has their number. Um, and and we'll see if they would, you know, end up playing. But does anyone point. in the Big Ten have the athletes that Iowa State does? I think that's the one where you no, sit I, there and I, say, Ugh. yeah, that's the that's the counter. I would just say what's fun about this Illinois team: one, again, almost a full five percentage points better at the line, uh, the super efficient offense, and I think when it gets to crunch time. If it's 68, 68 late in the second half, and you need a bucket from someone, the fact that Illinois can figure out ways to score with different guys, that they have multiple scoring options, that they're not one dimensional to me. Like do mask. <laughs> yes, do mask. <laughs> it's do mask and do mask. Uh, that to me is the <laughs> difference. Again, I'm not locking this up because this to me, the spread is right. This is going to be a, this should be a good, exciting game. I see Colby's point on Iowa State's defense, but I'll ultimately uh, stay strong here on Illinois plus one and a half. Kramer, what are you doing? Well, I I do I do think that Colby makes a great point when you kind of zoom out and look at the difference between the quality of athlete that Iowa State is playing and uh, Illinois is playing. It's it's on a different level. I saw someone compare the way that Iowa State plays defense to Nebraska. Which I guess schematically is an accurate statement, but it's like these are not the same. Like these two things are not the same at all. And I think if you know, I think Colby started out with the the correct point. You gotta you gotta look at the defense. And Illinois need, if Illinois struggles to score and is forced into the stuff that Iowa State wants you to take in those uh, low percentage jumpers. Well, but I guess that's my that's why I like Illinois is that I don't think they're going to struggle to score because they have so many options and aren't one dimensional. And Frank Underwood knows Jay Wright. <laughs> Frank? Yes. Okay. What did I call him? Wh- Who's Frank Underwood? 
Oh, he's the uh, he's the guy in uh, <laughs> House oh, of Cards. Okay. It's Brad Underwood. <laughs> I, we're gonna have another. Come on, Frank Bill Underwood. S- Bill Snyder. You know, that situation. doesn't happen. <laughs> Colby, come I on. know the coach's name is fucking Underwood. Brad <laughs> Underwood is the House of Cards guy. I Where mean, House it, of Cards was like fucking twelve years ago or something. I feel like Spacey's not even allowed. Uh, he, he wrote yeah, an yeah. apology to the world, well, but he's not I even mean, allowed you know, at these meetings you're, now. You're, you're reading, you're reading Spacey uh, stuff because because uh, of uh, P. Diddler, uh, his news story. So yeah, I got my wires crossed. Okay, uh, uh, and look, we're lucky we didn't have cut twenty five years ago because someone asked me who would I ra- <laughs> rather hang out with, Kid Rock or P. Diddy, and I, and I said. Uh. I said Kid Rock and like a hundred people uh, couldn't believe I said that answer. I'm looking like a prince twenty years in, later. In all right? fairness, neither neither answer looking very yeah, good. I mean, <laughs> I mean I mean look, I, I, I don't I don't mind I, I don't have anything against Bud Light, but I I, I don't mind shooting machine gun up in the air. No, I, did that, I don't did either, that in Columbia, right? but, you know. But, but, uh, but maybe hit your target. I mean, if I'm <laughs> if I'm Kid Rock, I'm not posting a I'd video. Be like, uh, right? Can we get but, another case of Bud Light? Uh, I wanna do <laughs> I don't want to like. I don't want to miss a case of Bud Light with a machine gun. Uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take Iowa State. I think the the better. I I know the conference isn't playing here, but Iowa State certainly different level of athlete. Well, do you love Iowa State, Ryan? No, I I think okay. I was talking to Bowser before this about our last man standing. Yeah, we're in the last man standing. We have to pick one game against the spread on Thursday, oh. and then knock on wood if we get it right. On Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we're gonna have our Went hands from full. thousands to a couple hundred. So yeah, we're in only small- two hundred twenty <laughs> people left in this thing. Knock on wood. What are we I, gonna go with? I figured we we sh- I kind of know what Bowser likes. So I, I Bowser said he likes UNC. Uh, obviously, we're on different sides with Clemson and Illinois. To me, it's either UNC minus four. Or I think San we go Diego UNC State. then. Yeah, I mean, because that was Bowser's first instinct. Was yeah, you're right. The problem is on the on the uh, on the card there for the last man standing contest. I don't. Care. It is four and a half, Ryan. Don't give a shit. San Diego State. We would be getting eleven and a half. Don't care. I thought you're the CLV police. No, nah, but it's not in these things. Oh, yeah, cool. Maybe that'll make them less popular. <laughs> Even better to take them. True. True. That certainly could make a difference. Hey, if you guys signed up over at hofbets.com, aka Hall of Fame Bets, head over there now. Use that promo code SGPN. To get fifty percent off your first month, uh, hofpets.com. Download the app. I mean, this is insane. My my whole chat with uh, producer Josh is just Josh, producer Josh bragging. Uh, he's a North Carolina guy, and uh, gambling just got legalized there. Um, just these crazy same game or sorry, like multi uh, leg parlays that he keeps hitting. He's got uh, these crazy NBA another sixteen to one. So if you're playing NBA, college basketball uh, is active. MLB will be ready. Opening day just around the corner. Again, Josh, Josh, not paying Josh at all, but he is loving this thing. I'm sure it's paid for a subscription at least in the uh, first month. And again, it's 50% off um, your first month. So give it a shot. If it's something you really don't like, no worries. But I think you're gonna enjoy it. Hofbets.com promo code SGPN. Uh, also, Ryan, I thought it would be fun because we are going into the Sweet 16. If you had four and a half million dollars, oh, whoa, whoa! Now, let's say you knew someone who was giving you four and a half million dollars in gambling credit. Yes, uh, I'm gonna get so many DMs from guys. Can I get an account? <laughs> you got well, accounts? And, and we'll s- maybe we should split it up, but maybe use some of it here. Just is there a future of these four teams that you would be getting down on? Uh, because there's a future in the. I'll I save mean, it for the for tomorrow's show. There's definitely a future on the Friday games. I understand why you're asking me that because of, I laid out that just delicious lock of Gonzaga to make the Sweet 16. Just no sweat. Although I did get, I I realized after the fact, Sean. Not only did I get kicked in the nuts with that Oregon parlay last leg. But I also had them five twenty five to make the oh, sweet sixteen. No. So it was a double whammy. No, 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 no. UConn is plus two ten, Houston plus five hundred, uh Zona nine to one, UNC eleven to one, Tennessee thirteen to one. Um, let's see, Iowa State, 
I mean, San Diego State seventy to one. Clemson is eighty to one. Illinois is thirty five to one. Iowa State's all the way down to twenty to one. So that's kind of interesting that Iowa and Iowa State and Illinois, while they're pretty close on the spread, their future prices uh, dramatically uh, different. There, Alabama also thirty five to one. I got a fun bet. Yeah, what do you what do you, biggest any, biggest blowout in the Sweet Sixteen? Okay, Alabama UNC is five to one. Biggest blowout. Mm. Oh, it, wait of the whole Sweet Sixteen. Yeah, so the, the whole eight Sweet games? Sixteen. That's interesting because I do feel like there's value in a dog. Like, what is Gonzaga to have the biggest blowout ride? It's just by game. It, oh, okay. you can't do it by team. So the Gonzaga Purdue game is six fifty. Oh, the game to be yeah, the biggest yeah, blowout. Yeah. Oh, okay. So not so there is no value in the dog. No, no, no. You're just because uh, it's we it can, doesn't matter. Okay. I found all sorts of fun markets. Highest scoring team market. I mean, what is Illinois Iowa State? Because Colby was saying he wouldn't be shocked if Iowa State blew them out. I guess I kind of would be. I like Illinois, but that one whoa, since whoa. the spread is close. Nine to one. Nine to one. Whoa, I'll say I, I like your I like your, hey. <laughs> I like your angle there on uh, on UNC to be the biggest blow at five to one. I'm taking both of them. Fuck it. I also think if I'm given if I'm given four and a half million dollars, you got to take a little on San Diego State. Is that crazy? As a future, uh, or is this? Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, probably. Mm. They would have to play. I mean, I guess they can they can always play with anyone, but it, it it's like I I have like could they beat Iowa State? Probably not. The the other thing is if they beat uh, UConn, it feels like it's going to be a, such a tough uh, game to get up for what's the their next number? one. I think they one. could beat Iowa State. It's just I don't think they can beat UConn. No one's going to. Colby, beat any UConn. of these teams you like taking a shot at the future uh, market right now? I mean, UNC at eleven to one's interesting. Maybe not quite high enough. What do you What do you like here? Any futures? I, I would say the Carolina one's appealing because. You know, uh, assuming if it goes chalk and they get UConn, they have the big to put up. A, you know, like I feel like it's a, that would be a tricky game for UConn. Um, but I am terrified that Iowa State could give could, if 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 it's Iowa State and not uh, so if if Iowa State beats the Illinois and somehow knocks off UConn, that could be a little tricky, I think, for for uh, for for UNC, but. I I just think the way UNC has so many veterans, it's a good play. I mean, you look at college basketball of late; all these teams that normally win the national championship have a, a, just a rack of veterans. So, uh, yeah, I think Carolina is is a decent sh- shot there. You know what? Now that I think about it, I and I do like UNC because I like them in the game. Eleven to one makes sense, but I'll, I'll take a small sprinkle in Illinois, thirty five to one, just on the idea of of game theory here. I mean, they're thirty-five to one, and they're only a one and a half point dog. They are a three seed. I, it, to me, that feels like a slight mispricing, especially when Iowa State's only favored by one and a half, and they're twenty to one. So I think you're getting a good value there at Illinois plus uh, thirty-five or thirty-five to one. I wonder what the circuit is, Ryan. You know what? I want to get on Arizona. Oh, really? Arizona's what nine to one? I, I you guys are talking all this sweet, sweet uh, magic about North Carolina. They're going to lose to Arizona in LA. That's going to be a tough spot for them. That will be. Uh, uh, all right, let's close it out with a lock and a dog for the Thursday slate. Kramer, what do you got? Well, I, 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 I fear that you are going to have the same. If I lock up Carolina, I, I, I'll, I guess I'll be different. So I'll, I'll go San, San Diego State dog. Oh, on the money line, big dog. Oh, we're gonna play San Diego State. We're gonna play dog. on the money line, and the lock. It, I would be dis. It's it's UNC or or Arizona. I'll go Arizona. Okay, Arizona minus seven and a half. My lock. Give me UNC in the Tar Heels at minus four. And I, you know, Illinois, obviously, I think is a chance oh. to win. But I'm going to Clemson money line. We oh, Tigers. Oh, oh, oh. Get it done against the Wildcats plus two fifty. We'll take a little slice of that. Colby, what do you got? Well, what do we got is the college experience is going to go live in about thirty minutes here, uh, oh, covering the this? Frozen Four. All right, oh, wow. it, it, don't forget the what Frozen the Four fuck? slaps off on uh, Tuesday on Thursday at, at two. So come slap off, off with us. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> what kind of slapping off do you got going on there? 
Get hop some on over. Two hop on over. Colby We're going to be Noah slapping off. Tummy sticks. <laughs> two, two o'clock Pacific Thursday. Uh, the slap off begins slap with off. Uh, with uh, the Frozen Four. As uh, oh. you got to love college hockey. Did you guys. approve this? You got to love college hockey. I, we gotta- I did not approve this. <laughs> All time great name, though. Frozen Four. I can't think yeah. of a better tournament name. And do you remember, Sean, when we were out there for the Masters last year? Him. We uh, we won a big bet on Quinnipiac. Yes. Or maybe it was just me and producer Joe. Oh, no, no Mary I was Mac. in on it. Wait, Mary Mac. Mary Mac. Wait, no, was it Quinnipiac? Quinnipiac. It was Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac. Yeah, a shit. Uh, I forgot our team already. And and Denver UMass, like I said, two p.m. Oh wow! Get on in Thursday. Noah, Noah got a bracket. The, Noah does have the pulse on uh, on slapping off. Yeah, uh, that, that, that one that, that one I stole from Alfred Forty Four in the chat. Shout out to you, Alfred. Good line. Uh, the lock is Carolina. The dog is Clemson. Wow. Let's get it. Yeah. Wow. A little Just parlay. Simple, right? How about this parlay though? Okay. Carolina, Iowa state parlay. I like that. Okay. I cannot participate, but best of luck gents. Colby. That's an excellent parlay. Let's ride. Uh, uh, uh. I'm going to just keep it simple and just parlay the lock UNC minus four with Clemson money on not as uh, or actually a little more spicy than what you guys are giving out. But uh yeah, let's go. Hey, we'll be back tomorrow night same time uh breaking down Friday's action. Merch madness still alive and well. 15% off everything in the merch store. Get you a hat, get you a t-shirt. We got freaking dog bowls. Uh so uh, refs are terrorists. Perfect if you Oh. I mean, wait until. Uh, I mean, Ryan from a uh, moneyline Mac was the bell of the ball wearing his rep. Yes, he said right? he got a lot of great <laughs> feedback. <laughs> got a lot of, uh, a lot of walking questions. around uh, with the rest or terrorist t-shirt, and that's probably the greatest um, thing to come out of uh, the NFL adding this hip drop tackle rule. Refs or terrorist t-shirt sales are going to skyrocket. Uh, can I uh, because of that? Maybe we should put out a hip drop edition. <laughs> But you, Jake you, can figure something out. You know, this is it. The, like we, f- we officially had the funeral for the NFL. This is yes. it. Oh, here we go. This is it. The league's terrible. It, it's a terrible what? league now. I don't know why I get upset. This is good. <laughs> it's uh, if Colby had nothing to bellyache about. UFL be like, much me. better than the NFL now. Co- Colby and UFL gambling podcast yeah. uh, official launch. It's probably I don't know if it's the USFL feed or the XFL feed, but if you're it's the XFL feed. Okay. Uh it, it was the XFL. If you're feed. a USFL diehard who didn't subscribe to XFL, <laughs> make sure you subscribe to the UFL gambling podcast. Where where uh, kick where football is still football. What we are, by the way, by the way, they did take our idea, Sean. They have the XFL and the USFL conferences. So Oh yeah. I mean, um, come on. They and to the and show. we're gonna do UFL Week One picks on this show on Thursday. Oh, I did not. Where, where are all these memos? <laughs> I did gonna, not get any. If of it these. doesn't go well, we'll cancel it. And, for the and rest of the they year. have real kickoffs, real tackles, and everything. It's unbelievable. All right, so we'll, we'll see. I'll I'll I'll, Col- I'll believe it when I see it. Colby's auditioning, and if it doesn't <laughs> go well, no CFL. We will cancel it. <laughs> yes, and if if UFL <laughs> gambling podcast doesn't get downloads, we'll also cancel the CFL podcast. Yep. I'm already headed to Canada, guys. <laughs> Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second the money green. He's Ryan. Uh, let's go, San Diego State. Kramer, let it ride.